And now, the most offensive radio talk show host on the planet, Pete Santilli. Okay, we have uh, Lori Anderson standing by. I need to make uh, this one quick point, okay? So let's... Um, uh, let's we're going to recap probably a couple of times before the end of uh, tonight's show. Uh, but let me let me highlight and reference that uh, Infowars.com was once again caught. OK, suppressing information, important information, life savings information. Talknetwork.com invited all mainstream and alternative media to attend the Mac, uh, mass shooting educational event uh, this Saturday. There was an uh, it was sent out in the open. Infowars.com was was asked very politely. As a matter of fact, Talk Network wasn't even supposed to be leading the charge at that point when we when we opened it up. Although uh, Matt and uh, and Murdoch or TalkNetwork.com hosts, uh, although Mike Adams is uh, he is the new media uh, leader, independent media leader uh, that that is open, willing, tolerant. And forgiving, even despite Mike Adams, which I'm sure at, at a certain point, very, very soon, you're going to find out about uh, who Mike Adams is in independent media. You're going to you're going to find out about it. But he is a he's, he's a kind uh, gentleman. You, you saw how tolerant and accepting he was of even the uh, the gay mafia agenda. I have to refer to it as a gay mafia agenda. It's actually a political movement. Um uh, where these people want to get out and subvert with dildos and fart guns, uh, led by uh, also their uh, their fearless leader, this guy, and we have to point this out, he's publicly been proclaimed as a black gay Republican running for Texas House on pro-life gun rights platform. He was the one uh, that was shilling on behalf of unconstitutional legislation called SB 11 that he said he was directly involved. And he also, without knowing what was going to take place at the mock shooting. He called for a stand down of a mock shooting he never even knew about. Infowars.com covered a mock shooting that they didn't even bother interviewing other people that were conducting it at all. They used this shill, the gay mafia leader on the ground there, pretending to be a gun rights advocate who was pushing uh, through his own agenda, a watered-down unconstitutional bill. That's what you're getting with the old, stale, independent media in Austin, Texas, where he should have had a million people on the streets, but looks like he doesn't have any fans that show up at uh, constitutional events. They want you home clicking on their boner medicine links. Okay, let's go to... Oh, that that's terrible. I need to segue in a different way to Lori Anderson. I'm sorry that, uh, uh, that I had to say... Uh, boner medicine links and then say now let's go to Lori anderson but <laughs> that's not appropriate but uh, let's go to Lori anderson on the line what's your comment Lori? hi pete and deb um i'm glad to be on the show and you have me tonight i have quite a few comments about what you're covering take your time first of all I'm take in- your time Lori. i'm so glad I- that you're calling in take, take your time don't worry about Aww. it mm-hmm. well thank you thank mm-hmm. you um and this is no re- disrespect also to Jeremy, what I'm going to say as well. Uh-huh. So I want to make that clear. Jeremy's I great. I, lo- friends, I loved his comments. Yep. Yes, yes, absolutely. However, um, I, I want to let it known um, I have people who are friends who are gay as well, and they absolutely cannot stand the individuals that do just like what happened with the drill. Yeah. No one is going into their bedrooms and telling them what to do. They're bringing their bedrooms out into the street. What the hell? If they don't want it discussed and fought over or or somebody to speak out against it, then they don't need to bring their toys out into the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great point, Lori. Absolutely. Sex toys. Having yeah. Right. Have, well, and, and how many people drove by that maybe had five-year-olds that saw that, that wouldn't have known what that stuff was, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, that looks like mine. I mean, you know, we can go both ways on the offense thing. So, But I have plenty of gay friends who have stood out against the gay mafia, as you call it, because they misrepresent them, and it makes them look bad, and they don't like that. No. I- um Go go ahead. Continue on, Lori. Great point. Great point. So all I'm saying is, and I understand what Jeremy was saying, I do. And and that's why I said at first I didn't want him to take it in any wrong manner. However, 
if you don't want people in your business in the bedroom, you don't bring the bedroom out into the streets or onto mainstream TV and then expect people not to talk about it. That's the whole reason that they did that. They wanted people to talk about it. Yeah, and they you wanted know, to, mm-hmm. I, I took, I took uh, as a matter of fact, I let you ladies uh, bash me for my brute force uh, approach to dealing with uh, the, and I say the gay mafia minority political agenda that is coming at me, okay? They don't want to defend my Second Amendment rights. Uh, I want to defend their First Amendment rights. They're, they're, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's hypocritical. Right. But, but I understand where he's coming from saying, well, Pete, you know, being politically correct might be appropriate for that first-time listener. And I, I'm going to say this. In this day and age, um, we, need to, we need to change uh, the conditioning of a population that can only make their decisions in one millisecond or one and a half milliseconds. The only time I want someone to make a decision in that short of a time frame is to whether or not they should have a concealed carry on their person in those one, two or three seconds uh, that they're typically uh, watching YouTube videos. What are you going to do in response to somebody that comes at you with a gun? Outside of that, don't take me out of context. I'm not anti-gay. I'm not. I, I'm actually uh, probably uh, using the gay mafia uh, rhetoric back at them because they're so forceful with with what they choose to do as to their sexual preference. You know how I'm going to respond to sexual preference? I'm going to say that's not only unnatural. Okay, uh, it, it's it's actually sodomy is is uh, biblically important to have a discussion about. Yeah. I mean, sodomy right. is against. Uh, but, oh, but let me let me make a point here. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that point is is. That because they bring this um, to the forefront and actually um, go for your reaction, Mm -hmm. they want you to speak your opinion. Uh Um, Otherwise, you wouldn't have anything to say about it at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have gay friends. We don't sit around and talk about what they do in their, you know, private places. Right. We we don't talk about that stuff. We go horseback riding. We, you know. So I mean, you think do you, we, you think their outrageous we, public display is to lure me into the conversation? It's it is to lure everybody into the conversation. Mm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's why there's a dis, that's why we do protest and and public displays mm-hmm. is you know. But the problem with these guys is is that when you uh, counteract them, you uh-huh. know. And you and you do give them your opinion, they attack. Yes, they that, attack. That's right. That's so it's probably, a big setup. That's probably the biggest point to make, and that's why I'm going to insist on applying an equal and opposite force back at them. I mm-hmm. don't care what they do in the bedroom, and I'm very, very tolerant of homosexuality. I really, really well, am. Well, privately. the point the point is, is like for you, mm-hmm. you, they force you to say your true feelings. Your true feeling is yeah that it's an unnatural act. Right. You don't like it. It right. makes you uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable with it. They they force you to say that. And then when you say that, they They're attack intolerant. you and call you a bigot. Yeah. They call you homophobic yeah. and all those things. So they're demanding that I be tolerant. And then when I tell them that I'm not, they're intolerant. Because otherwise, <laughs> you wouldn't have anything to say about it at all. Yeah. We don't sit around wondering what the hell, um, you know, homosexuals are doing right. in their bedrooms. Yeah. I don't. I know I don't. So, Lori, thank you for allowing me to, to get that out and put it on put it on the record. Um, but uh, what's your next sure. comment? Okay, so the next comment is about the drill and about the Texas Constitution and about the University of Texas. The University of Texas receives state funding. It also receives federal funding through the FAFSA grant. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay? wow. Mm-hmm. That means they have a contract with the state, a contract with the federal government, thus they are subject to the constitutional rules. You can't have it both ways. You are either public and publicly funded with the citizens of Texas money and the people of the United States of America's money, or you're private. But when you are receiving state and federal funding, you can't claim private school in order to cover something that it's just not a little bit convenient for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And they're, they're essentially setting the boundaries 
uh, citing, you know, uh, private discretionary and, you know, administrative discretionary uh, discretion over the bill, uh, essentially allowing them uh, to. And that's the way the bill SB 11 is written to give them the opportunity to override the Mm -hmm. U.S. Constitution and set up gun free zones. Did you did you look at SB 11? Lori? I'm sorry. No, I, I don't have that up. But yet um, in Texas, the te- the state of Texas has the right to force that quote unquote private college to lower their tuition. So how private are they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, they're not allowed to operate independently. Certainly not in that instance. So I just simply say. With that being said, with the state funding and the federal funding, they have no right to claim that they're a private school to make their gun-free zones. I say let's start saying no more victim zones. Oh, nice. Yeah, no more victim zones. That's right. Don't be be a victim, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And even in the Texas, um, this is the 1925 Texas Constitution. Uh, in Article 2, this is exactly what it says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, that, of course, has been altered. This was the 1925 version. However, was that really a lawful altering? Sorry, our alarm so, system just went off. Uh, hold on one second, okay? Hold on. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Go go ahead, Lori. Yep, continue on. So they're not only in violation of their own Texas Constitution, and I'm referring to the bill that you read mm-hmm. and went over. Um, they did alter that in the Texas Constitution um, on Section 23. It says the right to keep and bear arms. Every citizen shall have the right to keep and bear arms in the lawful defense of himself or the state. But... Don't you love those butts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the exactly. That shall have power by law to regulate the wearing of arms with a view to prevent crime. None of that says any private institution can, and it's not a private institution. That's an illusion. If UT was a private institution, it would receive no state funding and no federal funding. It has contracts with the state and federal government. That's mm-hmm. a very interesting point. And they're obligated to be constitutional, right? Absolutely. Yeah, when that's you a, have a contract with the state, you have to abide by the state's laws. Yep. And, Lori, uh, you know what? Uh, along the lines of um, uh, don't be a victim, we're going to go to a break here, but listen to this. I'm going to play this audio for you. This came from Mike Adams. Listen to this. Can't shoot back. You're all victims. Defend yourselves. Defend your families. Defend your communities. You're all victims. Stop being victims. Stop being victims, ladies and gentlemen. For everyone listening, it doesn't matter where you are in the sexual preference uh, spectrum, the political spectrum, the religious spectrum. Stop being victims. Okay? Defend yourself. Defend your family. Uh, defend your person. Stop listening to the establishment gun grabbers. Lori, before you make your next point, uh, can you can you? I want you to comment on this. Isn't it kind of um, uh, hypocritical for those uh, left wing libtardish gun grabbing Saul Alinskyites uh, to be suggesting to anyone that we should all defer to the police who they complain are out there shooting people? <laughs> Isn't it hypocritical for the left wingers to be suggesting that we not arm ourselves and defend ourselves? Uh, that we call the police. Yeah, it's actually kind of past oxymoron because at first, you know, they, they portray the police as these horrible individuals who are out to completely kill everybody. And then on the same token, they're like, oh, no, you need to disarm and just let the police have the guns. You know, it, it's hypocritical. And it's, it's sad um, that anybody actually believes what they're doing. Um, is actually right. I mean, sometimes these people that are doing this don't even actually think through the thought pattern of what they're saying. And it, it's sad. It really is because the things that they are saying and the things that they are doing 
they're actually fighting against themselves yeah, and they are, don't even realize aren't it. They, aren't they just being as as a tool of the establishment, gun grabbing, despotic, tyrannical um, uh, people that have hijacked our government? Are, aren't they just parroting that line to help brainwash the population into believing that that taking away our guns is going to solve the problem with people running around with guns who want to do harm to us. Yeah, and um, and and I'll make some. I'll make a comment that'll probably make it uh, seem a little bit more um, funny. Actually, with with what we're talking about right this second, if they think by disarming us that they're going to get the guns out of the hands of the criminals, it's hilarious. First of all, yeah. um, if 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 the criminals want the guns, ask the Sonola drug cartel. All they have to do is ask the ATF. They'll be glad to provide them great weaponry. Yeah, that's right. Um, Eric Holder, Fast and Furious, they can get a, a plentiful supply of guns. Absolutely. And then on top of that, if gun owners were truly the problem, we wouldn't have a problem right now because there's over 200 million gun owners in the United States of America. If we were a problem, do you think there would only be shootings every once in a while? Yeah, no, no kidding. That's absolutely right. And, you know, another another point, uh, they want to they the establishment that sets up these false flag stage training events and false flag shootings for the purposes of brainwashing the population and propagandizing. Of course, they want gun free zones because I think uh, their their false flag actors would get shot, wouldn't they? If we had concealed oh, carry, yeah. right? Oh yeah. If you, yeah. Oh, definitely. If you notice the pattern, it happens on um, government or state property. If you notice the pattern, the police also get there in quote unquote approximately four minutes, and DHS and FBI and everybody's all there, all at, at, at in a four minute range. Wow, great time span when you can't even get to protesters within ten minutes of doing a <laughs> drill. If nobody else can see what's going on, that proves it right there when it's a drill. You know what? We conducted a drill, and we found out that they need some more training. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They can't even find out who the – they couldn't even find out where our crisis actors were. (laughs) They have tens of billions of dollars in equipment. Right, and so this should let the public know if a shooting is going on and they're there immediately, this proves right here, okay – well, they knew about it beforehand, you know, whatever. And the media, same thing. I mean, they couldn't even find y'all for 15 minutes. It was great. It was phenomenal. Um, and and I loved it. The only one that I saw that actually put the video out of um, the gentleman, I can't remember his name. I apologize for that. But the gentleman that said why he did what he did was USA Today. And um, I was impressed with that. They they did the whole thing. You can find it on YouTube for that. Mm. And, um, and out of all of them, it was it was hilarious. You know, everybody stuck on dildos and farts, including Alex Jones, which including. blew my mind. I was like, you know, yep. Um, Lori, do I have? So, I want you to speak to this, and I haven't spoken to you about this. Okay, do I do I make a valid point? That that uh, that you know we in the patriot community, okay, have this person that's been sitting uh, at the top of the at the of the pyramid of alternative media, that 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 they did an absolutely poor job representing and supporting and defending the U.S. Constitution in the way they they covered this particular event. You you, you would expect them to oh, do absolutely. much more, don't you agree? Absolutely. I would have expected them to actually start speaking about the Constitution instead of, oh, well, you know, it's going to harm my little bill that's in, in Congress. And since when has Alex Jones been worried about harming any bills? Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what what is going on with Infowars.com pushing Donald Trump and the gay Republican uh, the, I say the gay, nothing wrong with the gay guy. I'm just saying the gay Republican who was supportive. Well, of the he's dildo the one that put it out there that he's gay, not he you. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly right. It seems to right. matter to him. That's right. It's okay for me to to mention it if he's going to be. But he's a, a gun store owner who's on Infowars.com uh, all the time presenting his wares, and this guy is presenting uh, that he's butt hurt because somebody was stepping on his pristine little unconstitutional bill. Okay. 
Um, what, what is up with Infowars and what they're presenting to their masses? Now, now you know what? I'm starting to disagree with the philosophy that it's probably uh, it's it's better to be to set aside any bias or or to to open it up to it to Infowars when we have these events. I'm saying in the future. Uh, that they should be excluded, especially if they're going to screw it up the way they did in this instance. <laughs> okay? I think right, they need to be right, excluded. Yeah. Let them sit over there and yeah. eat each other's balls over Donald Trump and the and the gay mafia uh, politician over there, the gun store owner with the gun-free zone. Well, see, we're smarter, Lori, because we hang out with people like you, and you send us information all the time, correct yeah. stuff about the, the, um, the Constitution. And not only you, but right. uh, ladies like Chris Ann Hall, you know, and we know that it, it is wrong. It is wrong in the first place to negotiate your gun rights with the United States government. It's a, it's it's a bad idea. How we ever went down that path, I'll never know. We because be they don't have the right to to give us the right to to protect ourselves with a firearm. They don't have the right to do that. We should be telling them what our decision is at the state level, that we've banned all gun-free zones and everyone has a right and it shall not be infringed to keep and bear arms, right? Shouldn't we, Lori? No, we should ban all terrorist um, zones. All te- I think we need to state it like that. Mm-hmm. We ban all terrorist magnet zones, period. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Having a gun-free zone is uh, essentially a declaration that you are a soft target for any potential assailant or terrorist that wants to do harm. Uh, You you are actually, uh, you have an opportunity uh, by by proclaiming yourself to be a concealed carry Second Amendment uh, exerciser. Uh, you're, you're, You're causing it to become a deterrent for any potential assailant or terrorist. Yeah, that that's right, Lori. Thank you so much. Any any other comments before I let you go? Uh, yes, I want to make one more comment. Yeah, good. Take your time. Take I, your time. I, can't, I cannot give any major information yet, but okay. I will tell you the next court date for Shane Bennett and Elizabeth Bennett is January the thirteenth, two thousand fifteen. Okay. I will um, find out the actual address. We still need people to show up down there in strong support, and I can't say any more, unfortunately because I'm promised to secrecy. But it's it's really important that we keep the people who believe in not just the Second Amendment, who don't want gun confiscation, who believe in the Fourth Amendment, to please show up. Yeah. And be there at this court date, and I can get more information to you. Lori, um, I think it was a great team effort. I want to thank you and recognize you for bringing that story, that important story to us. And I'll tell you what, uh, we the people uh, certainly stepped up to the plate uh, at that last uh, that last hearing, didn't we? Absolutely. And I am so proud of everybody who showed up. Yeah. And I just ask uh, that everybody continue to show up so that the heat stays on them. They are being watched and they know they are being watched and they know what they have done is unconstitutional and we're going after them for that. And I just want to thank you all for having me on the show again. Yeah, no, thank you. I love working with you all. Yeah, no, we love working with you. And Lori, this is what I want to do. Uh, if a topic comes up that you want to cover extensively, I mean, we've learned to to trust your work and the information that you send at us like a fire hose. You are on top of it as a true patriot. Uh, do me a favor, reach out and say, look, I need to come on and we need to talk about this, this, this. We'll schedule her on as a uh, as a contributor, give her give her more time as, as we did in this call. Thank you so yep. much. Hey, by the way, Lori, stay on the line with me, okay? Yeah. Uh, actually, stay on the line. Okay. All right? Uh, wait till you hear this. Wait until you hear this. I don't. I think you heard me mumbling and screaming about it. About the EPA. <laughs> Did you hear me screaming? I about hear it? him mumbling and screaming about lots of things. Yeah, but uh, but listen, yeah. listen, listen to this story right here, and let me let me put it up on the screen for you guys. All right. Um, okay. The the EPA. This comes out of the New York Times. It's breaking news, actually. Uh, the EPA has broken the law with social media push for water rule, uh, and that's per an auditor's findings, okay? Coming out of Washington, D.C., uh, the Environmental Protection Agency engaged in what they call, quote, covert propaganda. 
and violated federal law when it blitzed social media to urge the public to back an Obama administration rule intended to better protect the nation's streams and surface waters. Congressional auditors have concluded the ruling by the Government Accountability Office, which opened its investigation after a report on the agency's practices in The New York Times, uh, drew a bright line for federal agencies experimenting with social media about the perils of going too far to push a cause. Federal laws prohibit agencies from engaging in lobbying and propaganda. I can guarantee you that general counsels across the federal government are reading this report, uh, said Michael Eric Hertz, a professor at uh, uh, the Benjamin uh, Cardozo School of Law in New York, who has written in social media and government. The, an EPA official on Tuesday disputed the finding. Uh, we use social media tools just like all organizations to stay connected and inform people across the country about our activities. Liz Perchia, an agency spokesperson, said in a statement, at no point did the EPA encourage the public to contact Congress or any state legislature. Uh, but you know what? Using social media for the purposes of propagandization so that they can seize mm -hmm. our natural resources. Uh, they got caught doing it. The government has has admitted it. Lori, do you have any comment uh, to that? Oh, absolutely. It's not surprising. I just want to know when they're going to jail because I'm tired of the slap on the wrist. Yeah. I'm tired of hearing, oh, they got shuffled over to this. No, I want some people going to jail. 18 U.S. Code 241 and 242 sounds familiar with anybody. These are violation RICO statutes and everything else. They're allowing it to happen. EPA is only a tip of the iceberg. This is you in Agenda 21 all yes. over. Yes, yes, it is. They've been, they've been using this for a very long time. They even use um, NASA to push you in Agenda 21 uh, crud now, and it, it's sickening. Mm -hmm. And they get by with it, of course, because the Smith Month Act um, 2012 NDAA, mm -hmm. they got rid of that. So mm -hmm. they're allowed to sit here and bald face lie to us. And, you know, has, has anybody ever wondered why the news always used to be called news? Now it's called news story. Do you realize that? Oh, that's right. News story. That's right. Yeah. Not, not yeah. news report or, or journalistic reports. That, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for your commentary. So, ladies and gentlemen, the EPA uh, got caught. Lori, uh, be good and stay in touch. Uh, stay close as you all, always are. OK. Well, thank you, and God bless you all, and thank you for continuing to be a true patriot and getting the true news out. I We're trying. It. Hey, we by the way, how's, how's Tom Lacavera? Uh, are you in uh, pretty close contact with him? I know he's working hard uh, behind the scenes as well as a patriot. How's he doing? He's doing um, well. I had a radio show with him the other day about Shane and Elizabeth Bennett as well. Oh, great. Um and uh, he's doing well, but he is very, extremely busy. So he, he's still in the fight. Well, uh, tell him uh, I will get in touch with him. I've changed my cell phone number. He may have been texting me, but I'll get back in touch with him. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate it. Yep. Outstanding. Okay. This, uh, what's your comment?